What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here and welcome back to Throwback Thursdays, the weekly segment in which I get into my video game collection, pull out something wonderful, something awesome, amazing, blow the dust off of the disc or CD and put it inside the console and play it for you. Today you guys are pretty lucky. This is probably my favorite original Xbox game. I can't say Xbox One. <laughs> no, this is my favorite Xbox game, if not the best Xbox game of all time. This is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic uh, that was released and developed by BioWare. This game is so amazing. I can't say enough good about it. Of course now, after all these years, the game uh, you know, has been released so long ago, it looks pretty dated. But the gameplay of this game is still so fresh and so awesome and so amazing that playing it I didn't feel like I was stepping back into old school. It just looked a little dated, but the way it plays, the way it feels, the way that the, the game is presented is so fresh and so new, even after all these years. It's been a long time since I played this game. And I'm sure a lot of you guys who are gamers out there know about this game, how awesome this game is, uh, and so much stuff that you can do. The story of this game is actually <laughs> deeper and better than the prequels, the Star Wars movies, the ones that everybody hates that are actually canon, those movies are canon, but this game is no longer canon. How fair is that? It just doesn't make any sense that they would uh, remove something as awesome as Knights of the Old Republic from the, the movie canon and put something terrible like those prequel movies in there instead of getting those out. Uh, Bioware is an awesome studio. The way that they made this game is so deep. You get a huge inventory. The game has an awesome story, character development. Each non-player character is totally voice acted, so you don't have to do all that reading. Of course, you do do some reading because you get to pick and choose what you uh, actually talk to the non-player characters about. But the fact that even back then on the original Xbox, this game was fully voice acted by every character you talked to was mind-blowing. It still is, looking at it now and, and understanding how old this game is and seeing what you could actually do. The combat probability system uh, is so sick. When you walk up to an enemy and they become, you know, visible, you the game freezes and you can immediately go through your your move sets to pick what you will do as far as attacking or, or, or evading, swiping with your sword, shooting with a, uh, a, a, your pistols, or using the force. Unfortunately, when I started playing this this game today, I didn't get too far because I got a lot going on. I didn't want to, you know, invest 20 or 30 hours to, you know, completely beat the whole game. But this game is so amazing. It's so deep. You get to see Wookiees. You get to see iconic people, iconic races, I'll say, from the, the series that make this game worthwhile. Uh, this game has sick and very deep customization. It has an upgrade system that is real similar to the Mass Effect up, upgrade system. When you're leveling up your character, you can automatically update them to whatever the game feels will be your best loadout or your best optimizations at the time or you can go one way versus the other there's also a good versus bad paradigm meaning that you can actually play this game and the entire game you can be going for the the light side of the force or the entire game you can be going toward the dark side of the force and unlike some games that give you a good versus bad paradigm that truly does have a huge impact on the way that the game is played you start off as a human being and, and as time progresses, you become something else. And also, the good versus bad paradigm of this game gives you different types of abilities with the Force. And unfortunately, I didn't get far enough to actually unlock the Force on this game, but it does happen. You can uh, collect sabers in this game. Collecting lightsabers is awesome. Uh, and and, and uh, putting different types of abilities and powers on your lightsabers makes each one feel that much you know, unique compared to the others. This game is just ah, an amazing experience. If you don't know anything about Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, I implore you. If you got an old Xbox, you got eBay, you got Amazon, you got all these places in, that you can find them, find them at a yard sale, get this game if you ever have the opportunity to get it because I promise you, you will not be disappointed. It's an awesome experience. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, my favorite game on the Xbox console. Hope you guys like it. Now moving on, something amazing or terrible, depending on how you look at it, was just announced today, guys. 
Uh, I don't know how this is going to affect, especially people who do a lot of streaming on this service. And if this deal actually goes through, what the ramifications of it might be. But it appears that YouTube slash Google is looking to acquire Twitch as their new streaming service. So YouTube, of course, is one of the biggest streaming services in the world. Looking to acquire Twitch, which is the number one video game streaming service in the world. What does this mean? Now, they're, they're throwing around the big bucks, the B words again. Here we go. It's uh, Dr. Dre and uh, Apple all over again. YouTube is looking to spend $1 billion to acquire Twitch. Now, I don't know if it's the best idea for Twitch to actually sell because they're doing so well. So many people are utilizing the service on the PS4, on the Xbox One, and on PC that it seems that the company could probably hold out and make a lot more money before they move on with this you know new acquisition and let uh, YouTube slash Google acquire them my question is is this a good idea YouTube has a bad bad history with content ID claims and things of that nature there's audio in your video that is claimed by a copyright holder you guys know exactly what I'm talking about the thing I want to know I want to know from you is this a good idea or a bad idea how can YouTube acquiring twitch make twitch better and how can YouTube acquiring twitch make twitch worse will twitch adapt Google and YouTube's restrictive policies on content ID claims will you get strikes on twitch will your twitch account be removed will it be easier for you to be removed I really want to know what you guys think I want to hear the collective thought process of the subscribers you guys let me know down in the comment section below I hope you guys enjoyed throwback Thursday this week Knights of the Old Republic is an awesome game if you ever get a chance pick it up I'm the Beastly Gamer and I'll see you guys next time